fact, uh, the projection of them from using um, uh, digital projection techniques is so superior and that there will be huge cost savings here, uh, which will go into um, uh, more spend on uh, publicity and advertising and hopefully on the production of films themselves. Mark, do you know any project that failed because of the wrong uh, financial conditions? Can you say that, repeat yeah. that question? Do you know any projects or do you know any cases where the project or the case failed because of the wrong financial conditions? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, more th I'll just say this, more than one. Uh, much of my day is, is made up of uh, figuring out financial models that weren't responsible for films in the marketplace because another one of my responsibilities besides procuring financing is to broker distribution deals for films. Uh, I could, it would be a much longer day if we went through the list of um, all of the financial mishaps that I've experienced in the business. Uh, I, right now I think the biggest issue that the film, or at least independent film market faces, is uh, print and advertising dollars. And I also think, um, you know, once studios don't own um, s some more of these independently geared companies, and the executives that are there are more thoughtful and they actually care about the movies that are, they're putting out, I think that that marketplace will become more sustainable. Do you know any projects? Um, Again, I think that you know, history is littered with uh, with, <laughs> with, with with failed investments in media. I, I think it sort of plays a little back to the point I was I was talking about earlier, where it's key is is a track record and quality of management. Um, in my previous previous life, when I was working in, in film television production, it was just true time and time again. A good producer will, with a good track record, will endeavour all the time to get his film in on on budget or under budget. Uh, and looking at films going forward, it's, you, know, you can uh, control a lot of the production costs, but there always are um, things that, you, that are unexpected which come up. And it's there you need the experience of a producer with a good business brain to solve those problems as they come up. Otherwise, um, things can get very unstuck. There's a question. Please. Um, hi. Paul just said that the middle ground is missing a bit at the moment. Um, at the moment, I think still the most interesting entry point for the value chain is the theatrical release, but now we're witnessing on iTunes, for example, brief theatrical releases as digital distribution. Do you guys think that with the advent of digital distribution that there actually will be a different entry point into the marketplace and that basically that, that's a uh, chance for films that are maybe in the middle ground of budgets to collect more eyeballs than now because the theaters are clocked by Hollywood productions or as in Germany here with uh, funded films that nobody interests. Um, <coughs> the digital distribution model will change things, of course, but I believe that my children and their children and their children will go to the cinema to see motion pictures because uh, I'm convinced of this as long as puberty exists because teenagers will need a place that's warm and dark <laughs> to be with each other where their parents can't see what's going on and at the moment the cinema is the most convenient and cost-effective means for doing this and that's what will drive the business and as far as I can see as a media prognosticator puberty will continue to exist. I, I agree with Paul. I think, you know, theatrical exhibition will always be important. It's part of an event. And I think that's what our, I think as a, as a global culture now, we're looking for events. Everything has to be interactive. Like-minded people want to get in the same room. I think the theatrical experience will change because the ultimately the theatrical window will change, right? It'll be, we're, we're, I'm working on movies now where we're going to only put that movie out as a one-time event in theaters, and then we'll go either, uh, we'll have VOD, vi video on demand in the States, before the film comes out, or right after the film comes out, and we'll price it differently as time goes by. Um, 
I think the digital marketplace is very confusing for a lot of filmmakers as everyone talks about it, but the reality is iTunes is not a digital marketplace for films at all right now. That may change in 12 to 18 months, but I, get, I spend a lot of time on panels with filmmakers say, well, look at the digital marketplace. It means nothing for building a sustainable model in film. I think the one thing that we forget about is I do think the digital marketplace will take place of the DVD marketplace, but I also think that we've forgotten that the marketplace is ever more saturated with content now and people have so many different choices and that ultimately disconnects us to a lifestyle. People have to find a common thread. The, the responsibility of distribution now should be around aggregating audiences as a whole. Uh, you know, when I was in college, uh, it was part of the culture when you were in college to go see foreign language films. I love foreign language movies. Right now, they're ultimately suffering because that culture has been completely abandoned. So how do you create an event around it? And I think when you look at a multi-platform structure for films, in the independent marketplace, it's exciting because if I go online and I spend on time online through Facebook and other social media and I can find like-minded people and then there are events around great films that I've always wanted to go see and people can make that connection and create audience capture, that's going to help create a sustainable culture around those movies. But if we don't find that, then it will be those one-off big blockbuster movies that people go and look to see because those are the, those have the biggest marketing spends out there and that's what's in front of your eyeballs right away. Um, we've become heat seekers in nature with just content that's being thrown at us and we consume it, we don't think about it. So I think when, just w when companies are looking at how to distribute movies, they have to think about what's that connective tissue, how does it become more of a life lifestyle application rather than just one film as a one-off. And I think as a filmmaking community, that, that gives us an interesting problem to figure out, but, it, but we can figure it out collectively. Any questions? Okay, then uh, I thank you all for, especially the panelists. There's one question. One, so, one question, say someone has in the independent five million um, euro market landed a success, a long feature. How much um, importance would you add that to do further project talking about track records? that um, the filmmaker is uh, getting his film into the international festivals. Does uh, talk about track record and has already been invited. Should that be emphasized to, to become known in the industry? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Oh, great. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just make it up. Um, I think that Festivals are incredibly important for determining the way films are going to be seen. But again, it's exactly like digital at this present moment, is that there's no way to monetize that effect. So you talk about a filmmaker with a five million euro budget. Nobody, as Billy Wilder famously said, ha said, hey, let's go and see that film. I hear it came in under budget. Nobody would ever consider uh, that when determining which film to go and see. Uh, that film cost 15 million euros, so we'll go and see it because it's better value. If a film is made for 100,000 euros or a film is made for 100 million dollars, it costs the same amount to go and see it. And that is true whether you see it at a small screen in a, a, a tiny regional festival or you go to the multiplex to see it. There's no price differential at the box office with either festivals or the multiplex. And so for the individual decision maker, there, there's no implication. However, if a filmmaker can make something which has merit, i.e. is well received critically, and has impact, i.e. it is received very well at the box office, either in art house terms or multiplex terms, then that will very much determine their career moving forward because people like us understand that it's very good to work with people who know how to turn a written page, which is why we're all here after all, into something that's visual and has impact emotionally and financially. So that career will have impetus and momentum behind it. I have absolutely no idea if that's the question you asked. Sounds good. 
rather than the financing, uh, I just gave an indication to see what we are talking about in terms of what, what volume. Can what you I'm hold the microphone just yeah. steady? Uh, what I w was primarily interested in, the importance of the festivals to get the film shown on, in, let's say, in the 12A film festivals, some of them. Is, I'm sorry, sir, can you speak up? And there's some dishes rattling in the back here. So I think I get it. It's the, the, the impact of festivals as such is really, as I said in the opening sentence, is incredibly important. And again, that they are growing in number. At the last count, there are 800 film festivals running throughout the world uh, on an annual basis. And those are just the ones we know about that have significance. And uh, of those, um, my favorite by a long way is Berlin. And it's regarded uh, globally as the second most important uh, festival after Cannes, and it has a fantastic uh, impact on a film on a global basis because it attracts an enormous number of media who focus attention. And it's no coincidence that the rise of Berlinale in the last 15 years has exactly mirrored the growth in German cinema. Um, that, that, that Those have gone hand in hand because the focus has been brought sharply onto um, national uh, product and has also uh, allowed a glow around European cinema and cinema from the Far East. So when I was a child, and referring to, to, to what Mark said, that you know, growing up uh, I could see a film by Wim Wenders and then within one month living in the city of London, I could see all of Wim Wenders' oeuvre um, in a in repertory cinema quite easily. That's impossible now. And, and one would do it on DVD and have to buy them at vast expense. And that culture of the auteur is not so prevalent. But, but global cinema is so much easier to reach. So I could never see a film from Korea when I was a child. And now there are sections devoted to Korea on the high street or in uh, the online digital uh, sphere. But... To answer your question, yes, it's the festival mentality that has driven that awareness. So I see our time is at the end. Uh, I thank you all for uh, attending us and uh, for the interesting statements from the panelists and the discussion. And enjoy the further program. Thank you. Bye.